Thank you, Heidi. I'm sure after the readings tonight, we'll, we'll all be wide awake forever with so much to think about. <laughs> and our next reader is Dr. Trevor Carolyn, and he teaches at the University of the Fraser Valley, just up at Abbotsford, I believe. And for, for more than 40 years, he traveled widely in India, and he has polished, uh, sorry, he has polished poems. He has published 20 books, and uh, certainly has a great deal of contrasting life to share in his words with us. Trevor? Okay, Sarva Mangalam, thank you all for coming here this evening. And uh, it's a real honor to be uh, uh, working with the Tagore Society this evening. I, I have been going out there for a long time, and uh, the special place I go to is up the Hooghly River, Chandigarh. It was an old French colony inside of British India, but it's not far from the university that Tagore founded for his peace studies. And uh, I like to think of him, look at this groovy picture here. How cool is this? Um, it's like Chief Dan George uh, out in Bengal. He's the early peacenik who showed a lot of people in Britain and everywhere else to do, how to do it. Uh, the Ban the Bomb movement, um, we owe him so much. So he gave a lot to the world. And um, the area where he liked to retreat, especially because if it's, if it's especially delicious mangoes that grew there. One of the reasons that drew him there was also the secret uh, place where uh, Mother Teresa G used to go to cool her jets when things got heavy in Calcutta. So she went up the river and that place where he created is still a very soothing, wonderful place. And if you get a chance to go out there, I really urge you, it's a, it really brings uh, peace into your heart. It's where I got my first big enlightenment experience, that big bend in the Hooghly River, that's Maganga that's coming down, that big lazy bend in the river, it just hits you somewhere profoundly deep inside and uh, you never get over it, it's unforgettable. This is a piece called Dance Your Prayers. It's a, a piece of prose poem from a new book called The Summer Book that's come out here in BC. Um, I'm gonna work with it and uh, I'm gonna read a little condensed version of it just to get in with the time here. I'd like to just acknowledge all the other poets working here tonight, some of whom who, uh, have come far away. It's always a real moment to, to work with them and to learn from them and, and to see them share their work. And somebody who's come all the way from the Deep South, all the way up from Atlanta, Georgia, that's a lot of soul, so thanks everybody. This summer I've been dancing, tribal dancing, especially long night jukin to pagan rhythms, mega heavy African crisscross drumming, Aussie didgeridoos, Celtic abandonment dance, magic vibrations, real musicians, real music. At a rainforest gathering near Chicamas watershed, I experienced a mind opening as well with a new generation of grail questers, up and comers from the burning man scene. Their group is defining a new space in the culture for themselves. With trail marker ideas like sustainable development, permaculture, and living lightly on the land, they're optimistic, green, educated, diverse. We'll call them the rainbow people. In a world begging attention, they're happy to stay underground, making themselves not easy to find. Plenty of the young gene bearers I witnessed at the forest gathering, though, were resident of the best of real 60s culture that some of us still fondly remember, now filed 50 years in the archives. The similarities between our two generations were striking. The same willingness to step up and shake in the moon goddess's big enlightenment groove. In the sunnier days of the 60s, we called it peace and love, airing, pairing, and sharing life's simpler riches. Rainbows just say, dance your prayers. I like the sound of that, and was happy seeing that public joy and meaning is alive, dissenting, and well, a kick up the pants to the tyranny and oppression of the Patriot Act crowd. So I was glad to join in as these latest generational rebels shaped their own rhythm and dance. We were in a remote mountain forest you can't find without a secret decoder ring. 
invited to a workshop for the Wilderness Events Free School Program. I swapped stories with participants who journeyed in the bush from Vancouver, from BC, across the prairies, up in the states, three or four different countries. Rainbows stay informed and travel to each other's alternative powwows. Like my own lucky generation, they share an appetite for transcendence that mainstream culture doesn't much offer, a sense of community, of place, of the sacred, of something to belong to, not simply more of. There were no put-downs. No one was bad-mouthed because of this or that, and it was easy to enjoy the feeling in the air, gentle like a bowl of Okanagan peaches. Where in the 60s, we disdained money. Rainbows are way smarter. They understand its importance. They've reflected on how to improve things for their own time. What they disdain is greed. 30 years ago, tribal culture in Vancouver was wrecked beach and early 80s nude guerrilla Buddhist eco-surf socialist romanticism. Before that, the psychedelic upheaval of 60s peace and love, metapoetics. Previous came beat optimism of the 50s, and before that, Charlie Parker's bebop overdrive out of Kansas City, big band swing, plus jitterbug craziness of jazz age, roaring 20s, not to mention fin de siècle Paris, Baudelaire, Verlaine, Rambaud, Bob Dylan's heroes. Choose your intoxicant. With his lovely pink painting, Looks Calm et Volupt, Henri Matisse addressed summertime's perennial Edenic impulse that artists always understand. The deep forest powwow I observed was about dancing deeply, wildly, with a bonfire casting wavy shapes that dipped and swayed, flowed and undulated. From the tingling vibes in the air, the unspoken message I picked up on was no fear. With the dancing, it came through clearly. Gentle people, young women, ethnics, families, gender benders, just getting along together. No hassles, no one pushing their trip. Belonging was the trip. Without fear of being hit on, laughed at, catcalled, beaten up, or having to worry about your weight, or your hair, or your complexion, or your clothes, the way you think, how much cash you're toting, or the way you dance, just, you are okay. No fear. It was gratifying to see how it's still possible to enjoy various points along the educational continuum without contradiction, to be student, participant, and teacher all within our supernatural BC coastal range, to discover that there are still parts of the world where the spirit of a happy age lives on in spite of the commodification of, well, practically everything nowadays. September approaches, yet even with the benign warm waters of the Japanese current, you can feel the first breaths of autumn. The last fat blackberries attract wasps, black-tailed deer, the occasional black bear. I'm still digesting my experience of summer, the enthusiasm, the sometime flakiness, and full-time commitment to engaged living I witness here along the BC coast. Flaky? Who hasn't sounded flaky at one time or another? More than can be said for, say, the current twin political cults of schoolyard bullying and an endless politically correct whining. Socrates, that bricklaying gadfly from Athens, reflected that the unreflected life isn't worth living. That still sounds right to me. Thinking back on the ripe cherries and forest huckleberries, the wild crab apples we've picked and eaten, if I'm to choose between listening to the distant howl of timber wolves across the river on a full moon summer camping night, with the drums bumping and thumping and shadowed bodies leaping around a bonfire or yet another overpriced cultural event in town where the star is too artistically pure to wish the audience good night. It's no contest. I'm for dancing in immortal moonlight. Thank you. <laughs>